Brandy here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about our rainwater collection. I'm going to do my best to get some either photos or video clips in here. It's really kind of hard to show the whole thing, but I can show you little bits and pieces to at least give you an idea how it's set up. Where we live, we currently have an average of about 120 inches of rain per year. But when I first moved here, the average was actually 144 inches. So it's actually decreased in the amount of time I've lived here, which has been about 30, 30 something years. I don't know, 33, 34 years now. Obviously rainwater collection just makes sense when you get that much rainfall, especially if you're either trying to go completely off grid or if you're at least trying to limit your dependency on a public water system, which is mostly what we've been trying to do, but also to have a backup water source when needed because there have been times where there's been main breaks and so on and so forth and the water either to our house or to the whole neighborhood has had to be shut off or even in our very wet climate, uh, we had one summer we were put on some pretty strict water restrictions and I had a garden to keep up on. It was definitely good to have that backup water supply. So let me talk a little bit about how it's set up. So Patrick found, I don't remember where he got them. I think he found them on eBay or Craigslist or something. A couple of 55 gallon drums. Now these are the blue ones. These are food grade. If you're going to start this, it's really important that your rainwater collection is put into something that is opaque, not translucent or transparent. Because if it's opaque, that's going to help prevent algae growth in there. So he found these two 55 gallon drums and what he did was he mounted them up on a platform that's about three feet tall rather than sitting directly on the ground. And water is being collected actually off of our shop roof. It, now that we have a metal roof on our house, it would be nice if we could start collecting it off the metal roof because that's actually a better roof. Metal or shake roof is better than a composite roof because of the chemicals in there. But we do filter the water, so please don't lecture me about that. We've been doing this for years. I understand it. So anyway, we had to do what we had to do at the time. We were trying to get away from the fluoridated city water to heal our thyroids, and I would have rather taken a chance with that and then filtering it myself than continuing continuing to consume the fluoride in the city water which by the way helped we did successfully get ourselves off thyroid and that was one of the big steps we took so we collect it from the back the gutter on the back side of the shop he has those barrels set up just under where the gutter is and he's got some a pvc pipe that goes from that gutter coming off the shop down into the first tank. That's the one you see on the right hand side. We call that the first flush tank. So that's going to be the dirtiest water in there. When we need to clean that out, that's the water from that tank. We make sure we use that. Usually that one gets used to water everything in the greenhouse. So we actually have a hose that's connected from that outlet because it's on the back side of the greenhouse, on the north side of the greenhouse. And so it goes from that particular tank into the greenhouse and then we'll try to water everything with that until we empty out that tank and then give it just to get all that dirtier water out then what happens is when that when it we're getting lots of rains that tank will fill up and then he's got that piping that pvc pipe that connects from it goes up and then back down again from the first tank into the second tank. That's going to be the cleaner water. Then from there, we've got a table now set up under that setup so that I can just set the buckets easily right under those spigots. I have a gallon bucket I keep out there and then I fill the water from there. He actually, even though he has a little hookup that goes from that tank, you'll see a little, a little tiny hose that goes from the bottom of that tank into where our water filtration setup is so I can just keep a better control of it. It's a little easier for me to handle. I actually found I prefer just filling the buckets up one at a time to keep topping off the top bucket. Now, 
uh, please don't judge yet again. I'm going to put an image here of our current setup. And I have to admit, when, when Patrick bought these buckets years ago, we just weren't even thinking food grade, non-food grade. He, we were just in a hurry to get some kind of setup. We wanted the biggest setup we can get. We wanted at least five gallons. And we couldn't afford the stainless steel setup at the time through Berkey. Though I do recommend that. That is obviously going to be better. It wasn't until some time later that it dawned on us these aren't food grade buckets and so if you're going to do this i do recommend you go with food grade buckets but again keep in mind we've been using this setup for probably about eight years now or so and it's it's been great water that we've got from there so anyway that water gets put into that top bucket that you see and then we have the berkey filter in there so basically what patrick did was he took the five one of the five gallon buckets and he drilled a hole in the bottom that would be big enough for us to see, sit that Berkey filter down inside there. And then it's on the bottom side of the bucket where it comes out and then you, you have a wing nut that goes on there and fits it snugly against there. Then the water will go through that filter that and will clean out, it'll clean everything pretty much out of that water. Those Berkey filters are great. They don't carry the white ceramic ones that we have anymore. Now they're all the black ones, which are even better. They're a little more expensive, but they're even better. And then that drips down into that bottom bucket. And then that bottom bucket, Patrick installed the spigot on there so that we can easily fill our gallon jugs from there. So back here I have two glass and this is what the filtered water gets stored in is glass. And I always have about at least a month's supply stored up in gallon jugs like this. So yes, we have a lot of one gallon jugs. I collected them for years. Most of them are recycled wine jugs. I found some at a garage sale even and I was willing to, to buy them because you can buy them brand new but if you can get them for free because some you can some people buy this cheap wine at the store if they don't have anything to do with their jugs just ask them if you know they use that and they'll probably be glad to give you their jugs instead of tossing them. Because otherwise they're t they're six to twelve dollars to buy them brand new. These two back here are empty. I need to take them out and top them off. Every day I have to fill one to two jugs per day to keep up. And this is all the water that we consume right here. We use this for coffee making, cooking, boiling, drinking, whatever. That's it fermenting i only use rainwater the filtered rainwater when i'm fermenting anything so i can avoid the chlorine and chloramine that's in the city tap water which can affect your ferments and and really isn't best for your health and so this gets stored some of it gets stored as you'll see in the picture some of it gets stored out there and i rotate through it daily and some of it gets stored in the house in the closet I have about a month's supply. I have a couple other closets where I store these jugs in. And as long as you keep them in a dark place, they're going to be fine. It'll last, it'll last for years actually in here, but I still like to cycle through the jugs and not let them sit for long periods of time. And then what we also have, we do have two other backup water cleaning setups. And one is the reverse osmosis. Now, we don't like to use that as much because you only get, I can't remember what it is. You get about two thirds of the water gets flushed out and one third of the water, you end up with the actual clean water. But you can still salvage the other water and use that in your garden and, and such. So it's not going to waste. And then we also have a UV light set up for disinfecting the water if we ever need to use that. So we have a few different ways to clean the water, you know, especially if we ever run out of the uh, the Berkey filters and can't get them, then we do have other methods. And there's many other ways that you can purify your water for drinking, but mostly it's just, we just keep using those Berkey filters and we clean them up. Now I have a video on how to how I clean the Berkey filters. They you can make them last for a year or more by just keeping up on them. But they do eventually come to a point where it just eventually they just stop. The water just starts going through there slower and slower and slower and then it's time just to replace them. But you can get them to last a long time with proper care. Now if you want your water to drain through your buckets a lot faster then it's best to put two, three, I think you can put up to four of those 
install four of those filters into the bottom of your bucket and what's going to happen is just going to you're going to get a lot quicker flow through through with the one filter if it's a fairly clean you might get you might be able to filter one to two gallons a day but you can get twice three four times that amount with more filters in there but i just always stay ahead so it's never an issue we always have plenty of water coming back to the plastic one thing you do got to keep in mind is that it really doesn't matter what plastic you use all plastic has some level of toxins in it so even if you get food grade plastic buckets you're still going to want to try to keep that water going through there quickly and not let it sit in there and definitely don't let it get hot so where our uh, 55 gallon drums are again those are plastic it's best if they're not getting hot uh, they do stay relatively cool the biggest issue we have is is those few rare occasions in the winter where we might have a long period of hard freezing a long period meaning like three to five days sometimes those drums the water will freeze up in there pretty solid and then we can't get any water out to keep it going through which is also why i always have so many jugs on hand in case I just can't get it freezes so hard for so long that I can't get any water out for several days but that it's rare that it happens that it freezes up that hard so now that's not all <laughs> that's just that part of it there's more to the setup than just that I can't show you any images because the rest of it is all underground so what we have are two 1,000 gallon tanks or 1100 gallon tanks I think it is that we got again I uh, found them on Craigslist years ago and then Patrick buried them in the ground and there's actually one on each side of the greenhouse there's two purposes for that water it's our backup emergency water source if anything happens to the public water or like we get put on some serious water conservation reserves which always would happen in August because that's our driest month of the year we actually do have a somewhat dry month we didn't this last year but it can happen and also that is the water I use mostly for watering our gardens as much as I am able and you know the rainwater is just going to be a lot better for your garden so if you have the ability to store up that much water and a way to do it that's a good way to go because the rainwater is just going to be a lot healthier than your city water so you have the first flush then you have the second tank and from that second tank the overflow from that goes down into the tanks underground and the two tanks are connected to each other so having the tanks buried underground gives us more upper space that we can use because you know when space is limited you got to make the most and having these big huge tanks sitting above the ground not only are get, are they getting light and not staying um climate controlled more by being buried under the ground because they can't they're not going to freeze under there either it just gets them out of the way so that's a really good option oh and i forgot to mention one more thing obviously to get the water up out of those tanks we do have a pump that's set up in the greenhouse that pumps the water up into a pressure tank that we keep in the greenhouse that we actually picked up at the dump for free and then we have a few different setups we have a couple of hoses in the greenhouse for that go from that and then another one outside the greenhouse and another spigot outside the greenhouse so all that water that gets used in that way actually does come straight up out of those tanks using that pump that does run off of our solar power all right, well, I hope that does help at least explain and give you an idea how our rainwater setup works and also why we have it. It's always good to have a backup water source. Remember, water is actually more important than food initially because you can last longer without food than you can water and consider all the things you need water for. And it's also more important than electricity. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, gave you a few ideas to look at becoming a little bit more self-sufficient or to at least have a backup source especially if you live in a place where you can't have a well or don't have a well this might be an option for you all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless